Hello. Um, I'm really excited that you're watching this video because you don't know what's going on, but I do. And I'm excited because you know how there's vlogmas and everyone's little vloggers like, Merry Christmas everyone, let's get this algorithm and we're going to post every day. That's what I'm doing, but with the design. So my inspiration came from the fact that like when I was looking for new designers, I like looking for people who have the same skill set as I do. So I would consider myself like a round junior internship level designer. And I want to watch videos of people designing because especially as I'm creating, I usually just watch like a reality TV show in the background, but I get more inspiration like when I'm seeing someone design as well. It's kind of like body copying. And I couldn't find anyone in my level. Everyone was like already professional designer, already got their stuff together. And I'm like, where are the people, the POC new designers like me? And I figured this might get a community going of people who are looking for the same thing, who are just trying to learn design and build up their portfolio and get comfortable with the skill sets that you put on your resume. So in 31 days, I have 31 different projects and I hope to tackle them all with you. So I'm going to be showing my process. I'm going to be um, making the mood boards for them. I'm going to be uploading them to Behance and everything. And I hope that you enjoy. Now for the fun part. We're going to be choosing what we're going to be designing today. I'm so scared. I am extremely scared. Okay. I was about to fix something too. Okay, it seems like I need to put a mute on my computer as well. We're doing this one more time. <laughs> No distractions, this is the one. I wonder if I should keep my eyes closed more like this. A UX analysis learning language. Okay. We are not starting off in a fun way. <laughs> so for people who don't know what a UX analysis is, I'm gonna show some clips. Okay, so when I say UX analysis, this is what I mean. Um, in UI UX, a lot of the work that goes behind is the research and that's looking at the problem statement and what the idea is. So if we're looking for this example here, um, let's see, okay. first is usually a competitor's, um, analysis looking at, okay, if I'm building this website, this app, who am I competing against? Who, who am I like trying to, not outsmart, but who's in the same running as me, who are, who are, are my customers or my um, network also using? So you wanna look at that, this must be in the app, should not be in the app. Let's see. If we were to go to my website, tea break, tea break while we load. I just updated my website, who likes it? <laughs> yeah, here's my um, UX analysis here. Okay, so we have a summary some research findings. Um, then we have some stats over here, some, some three-way comparisons, and some research, research takeaways where we look at, okay, what's, necess what's a necessity for this feature? What are some considerations? Then we do um, get a, oh, a user map to see, okay, what are, they, what are they saying? What are they feeling? What are they doing? And then you get to the planning stage. So I would consider a UX analysis summary, research findings, and research takeaways. And I have it here for um, a language learning app. So we're gonna be competing against the bird. <laughs> okay, so when I first think about like, if I were to make a language app for a website, what would it be like? Cause if we look at Duolingo, it's pretty damn good. Like now, do you complete the game or complete the app? Never know. I am someone who like, it's like maybe like level one, two, three. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. Like, I forget about it. My grandpa bought me Rosetta Stone for French like a long time ago. The platform was just so hard to use. Mind you, that was a while ago, but it was just like, it's not really easy to understand. So let's work with that. If I were to make a language app, what would it be? Do I want a website or an app? I think I want an app. I want to build an app. I'll be really honest. I got dyslexia. I'm making a YouTube video, writing. I don't want to hear 
This ain't spell right. Mm. This is an apostrophe. Mm. This one right here. No. So I'm going to talk how I feel and write it down after. Or write it over here on the side. You're not going to see this. See? We're just talking here. So I want to build an app because if we're trying to get the most people to play, like, to learn this language, I don't think people are going to be on a laptop learning language. It's not intuitive. So not on the desktop because when you want to learn a language, yeah, so having to like walk over to your laptop and go learn a language seems really hard to me. So I'm looking if we have it like an app that you can learn on the go when you're on the subway, when you're walking somewhere or you're just like chilling at home even you can you can do it on the app. So that would be, I'm thinking for the actual design of the of the um, language learning app, I think I would want it to be a game. I watched a YouTube video on like learning language through a game and it was like a text-based story but it was helping you learn the language. That's something I want to learn at because I think a text-based story keeps you involved. I think it's more just fun and it's you know I don't really see that anywhere because I tried looking for an app like that where it's like it's a text-based story that helps you learn the language. Nada. And how it's work like why would you need the game? I'm thinking it would be like you know how you play, um, what's it called? Candyland? How you're like going from like one place to another? I think it'd be like that. And you'd be getting little tasks. You'd be like, okay, these are the words I know. This is a sentence I can put together, like along the path. And then you know how like in Pokemon there's boss levels. I think the boss level should be the test in language. Mm hmm And instead of it being like destination A, to destination C. I really hope you can't hear this. They're building a fucking house right there. So if you can, you understand. It's not my problem. And they're done. Hopefully. Anyways, instead of it being from destination A to B, A, A being starting, B being finishing, I think there should be a lot of side quests because side quests, when you learn language, you kind of want to choose what you're learning first, right? So I think you would start off like, okay, Level one, you have to learn the basics, right? But as you get more and more, you can decide, okay, what do I want to learn, right? And because this is a one-man, a one-person team, and we'll be doing this hopefully within the next couple of hours, I don't want it to be a whole game of designing. I'm just going to research if I were to, what would that, what would I need to know, you know? Okay, I just got the summary for my app. Um, I'm still going to read it off to you. So it's when it comes to learning a language, most apps are currently very simple, going level by level. I'm working on an app that is a text-based story with side goals to learn different topics and boss battles to, as quizzes to see how well you learned your level. With this approach, I would keep users on my application by making them interested in both completing the game and learning the language. Think Pokemon and Duolingo created an immersive language learning app. That's what my app would be like. Whose game? Who would play this game? I think you would. I think you would. <laughs> All right. So now that we got our summary down, the next thing you want to do is um, looking at the research findings. Like, let's look at articles and writing papers that like support our claims and something that'll help um, get some ground to what we want to create here. So, looking for so solid research findings. Usually, I use Google Scholar or papers that people have already written. And some terms we're going to be looking at is probably like um, language learning through games. Let's see. Let's let's go in. Let's dive in. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna be looking at language learning. Let's go motivation. Okay. So language learning motivation is scripted, a scriptive and casual analysis. Let's see if this is going to work for us or if we can actually open up the language or like the, oh, it's giving a reading. So I don't, I'm not in school, so this is not the best for me. 
or a school with an email that would help me. So I miss when I was able to go to Google, Google Scholar and just open and read everything. Now I can't. Language learning motivation, the student, the teacher, and the researcher. This paper discusses the roles of the teacher, student, and the language researcher and understanding the motivation to learn another language. The highlights of the social educational model of a second language. Research. Okay, don't equal text. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, she's a 20 page document. We're gonna read this because I think we're gonna need to want this. So, best thing when we're doing research is to make sure you're getting like reputable sources. So, this is what I would do if I was to do a full UX analysis. Someone hired me to do this. I would start here. Let's see if there's any other motivation studies that we can learn. Second learning. Because what we're trying to do here when we're building this app is that we want to build motivation for people to continue to learn. Basically, what we're looking for here is anything that will let us read for free. So it'll also be Googling language learning apps, maybe. Learning, the learning styles and strategies for effective learning. Okay, download, please. Thanks. That's very good. So we have two sources for learning, for um, motivation and learning styles. I think the last one we should be researching is learning languages um, with through apps, if we can find that. Okay, so next thing we're looking for, I said was, okay, review of use of mobile apps for language learning. Uh huh. We love this. Oh, and they have like a good analysis. This is very good. Fitting learning into life, language students specific benefits. And just, yeah, that's perfect. You can get that article, be great. Is this super gaining? I think, hey, this video I think would be great for people who are new to UX UI and like me, just designed the UI and you know, presented that. But when we're looking for real UX UI settings, they really want to start with the research. And that's what I learned through my education. And luckily, we have a lot of different research here. So we're going to download this and have this be our last article. Yeah, I think having four articles is good. And like, like I said earlier, we're taking this research as a starting point to make sure that our application is um, sitting on strong ground and that we're not just going in blind here. So I'm going to step back. I'm going to read these articles and I'm going to highlight some points that I think it was important. See you later. I'll see you when I'm done. It's currently 1026. I'm going to, with my reading style, I'm going to hope to be done for like 1112. Hello, my darlings. I had just finished um, reading all the articles I can show you. I, let's see. I mean, oops, I love a bad camera. Okay, here. I mean, I went in highlighting. I am not the best reader. It's 142. We can say here how many hours it took me to read all that. Can't say I don't do anything. Anyways. I finally got together my research findings and I read a lot and I feel like I really know language learning, learning styles, and um, learning language on the phone now. So like a, an expert, you could say. I'm going to flip over to a little bit uh, update on how I'm doing in the UX analysis. So okay, as you can see here, I got to the summary and the research findings. So I'm thinking now that I have my research, I'm going to do some comparisons of other apps that I'm looking at and um, start there. Cause I think I have the research. Let me compare some stuff and then we can start doing some research takeaways. Yes, okay. I'm also gonna take a look at some of my other um, UX analysis just so I'm not like forgetting anything that I wanna do as well. So I'm gonna be writing this down. Slow, very slow loading. Um, research findings. There, I did a quiz. I don't think a waste word there. Just there. Okay. I do want to do a user persona, and then a empathy map. That's what I want to do. This customer journey app. I feel like 
Um, might be a little bit much for right now. Especially since I'm not actually making this application here. This would just be great research practice, honestly. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. I think that would be it. I would feel happy doing the comparison, user persona, the empathy map, and then we can call it research done. Excited! <laughs> I'll be um, seeing what I compare now. Okay, so I've chosen the three apps that I want to comparison for my game. I have Duolingo, which is a must, Quizlet, and Rosetta Stone. So I'm going to be looking at what these three applications offer, what their goal is, what their target market is, what, what are their methods of teaching, just so I get an understanding of what's out in the market and if my app will compare to that. Okay, so as I'm writing over here on my screen that you can't see, I'm writing my theory comparison. So I'm thinking like, what do I wanna be looking at? What, what am I comparing? My first thought would be target audience. Target audience age, to be more specific. Then I think it would be um, what learning styles do they um, cater to? And then let's see. Hmm. Maybe how many languages they supply? Um, I don't know. I mean, we'll just, I'll say free versus paid content. I'm going to take a look at some of my other um, theory comparisons now, too, just because I want to do a really good comparison, and I, I don't want me missing out. I'm also looking at, um, let's see, like my other theory comparisons I've done for my digital journal platform I helped with, and it was comparing the app and desktop versions, if they had any, and um, what their feed looked like. Okay. I could probably also do like navigation system and seeing like what are they offering through navigation. I think that's good then. So I'll write those down. Let me make sure I write that down. So here is my Google Docs. So desktop and app feed navigation menu. Okay, I think that's good. Today was a particularly long day. I'm at 2 21 p.m. I just finished the three-way comparison. I'm gonna flip over to here. Look at that, look at her. I'm always gonna design it nice. I don't know, I can't decide if I'm going to um, like design it now and show you the design or I'll just show you, show you after. I'm gonna go Instagram real style and show you the reveal after. But just know, every time I cut and clip, it's about an hour or two of work behind it. <laughs> okay, so this is what I'm also gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing next is the user persona, which is getting a real clear definition of like who my target audience is. Um, here's an example of the user persona I did for my Sudoku app, but I think I'm gonna reference another user persona template because I remember one of my instructors saying that I would need a little more detail on who this person is. So I know for this user persona, I want to have an illustration because it'll make it a little more fun on my part. And then I want to um, list the needs of the user and the goals. And let's see if we have, see here, works as operation phase 24, da, da, da. Um, large, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and figure out who my user is. Let's see if I can quickly, probably not quickly, I'm gonna go find a, um, another user persona template to model this after, so it's kind of more accurate and more in depth. Okay, so I'm looking at this user persona from Career Foundry, and I'm picking out some key, some key things I wanna add in my persona. So what I have written down is an illustration, because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to steal someone's photo, I don't feel like it. And they have goals and needs, which I have at section here. 
but they also have motivations, which I do not have in my list here. So I have motivations and vital statistics. Okay, she's 38. So age, um, lives a busy life on the go. And little quote. So let's say like profile with age, location, um, lifestyle, and maybe a quote, that'd be cute. And they have a section for everyday activities and device and internet usage. I think I might add everyday activities and I'm neglecting to notice here that they also have frustrations, which I didn't have. So we'll go there. All right, let's go. I'm going to do this on um, recording just because I feel like it, because I feel like I haven't shown you the process of what I'm doing the research behind my thought process, especially because this is going to be very guessworky. So we don't need to actually like read pages of pages of um, information. I'm going to so we have Noelle. That was the name I chose. So if you look over to the list that I made, needs an app to learn Spanish because Spanish is spoken with his friends. So that kind of implies that he's in like Spanish speaking culture and he's already interested in the lifestyle. Um, let's see, Noel needs this app. He needs it to keep his motivation. He has tried other apps, but always forgets about them. What else does he need? Needs motivation to continue learning, yeah. And then in that case, I feel like he would need to also make sure that it's in his learning style. Because if he doesn't know like why he's not using these apps, the other ones, he doesn't know why. Or maybe he doesn't know why, but I guess maybe it's simple, really simple, user-friendly. Goals to be conversational because his friends speak Spanish. He probably wants to in Spanish. He probably wants to be able to do that. And let's see another goal. He probably want mm, to be able goal like goal goal goal. I don't think he would need a time frame. I guess he would just want to be able to see results. Yeah, it's another goal for Noel. Noel is computational in Spanish. He wants to be able to track and see his results. Um, he would want a learn at own speed approach. So I hate with like other apps that like they're very much like, okay, let's learn now, learn now, learn to your own speed, get off my back. <laughs> We're gonna call back to being his friend speak it. So maybe um when he goes out with his friends, he feels left out of the conversation. Oh, you can even see this. It's too small for you, huh? Zoom, zoom. There you go. I think you like that better. Maybe keep up in school. Maybe he's going to class in Spanish. I think we, let's see, what's the next section here? Profile. Yeah, I was about to say that because Noel was giving nothing right now. I think Noel is probably like a younger guy. We'll give him like 19 years old. First year in university. Um, comes from academic background, but struggles in a new setting. Okay, being a new school. Noel's 19 years old. First year in university. Comes from academic background, but struggles in a new setting at okay, being in school. Okay, everyday activities. Um, I think he plays a sport. Yeah, he plays a sport with his friends. I don't wanna say soccer, because I feel like that's a little too on the nose. I feel like baseball's also on the nose. But maybe things are on the nose. <laughs> soccer, because it makes sense. With his friends, studies. Um, maybe he studies film, you know what? He, he studies film and he just wants to learn Spanish and he plays soccer. Mm -hmm. He's a well-rounded dude. 
let's see, studies film, um, lives in the dorms, a dorm setting with friends, so sees them awesome. Sounds good. Um, and frustrations. Frustrations? What would his frustrations be? I think they would be the fact that it's a lack of motivation to continue language learning with base continue language learning. Another um, frustration. I think it would be not enjoying learning. Yeah, I think if you don't enjoy it, it's not really a process you continue. Yeah, so not enjoying learning in a lecture setting. In a lecture setting. Yeah, that makes sense. Finding time because I think he's busy. He seems busy to me. He's in soccer. He plays film. He's with his friend. Yeah. Finding the time to remember to study Spanish. That sounds good. I think that's a well-rounded guy. Noel. I think Noel clocks out. I'm glad I did this with you. A quick nine, ten minutes. And the next thing I should be doing is an empathy map. Okay. I think I'm going to hop off and do this and show it to you after because we're kind of wrapping up here. After this, I'm going to show you the process after the empathy maps. Who's excited? If you are, um, if you do UX, UI, I would love to hear in the comments below or in the in the description just because I feel like starting out with this three, 31 days of design and starting out with UX, UI is kind of like not what I expected because I feel like when you think of design, you think of like, I don't know, these cool posters and animations and illustrations, stuff like that. And I'm like, here's research. <laughs> so user, let's say user experience. I'm, refer I'm referencing a user um, or empathy app I did for the digital platform and the experience of a new user. I think they're coming from a recommendation from friends or someone in class. What else is the user? Optimistic. Learn Spanish fairly quickly. And then thinks. I think he thinks he's going to try this one. How far along in the game will I get? How much Spanish do I already know? What makes this different from other apps? Can I understand the game easily? So feels. I think he feels very optimistic, like I said. Optimistic that this time will work. Optimistic that this time will work. What else would I be feeling? It depends if it shows like everything. I feel like you would feel a little overwhelmed. Because that's the first thing of how I felt when I looked at Duolingo. It was like, oh god, there's a lot of levels here. So maybe if you hide those. Anyways, feels, feels, feels. Um, how do so then I think it does is next. Does what does he do? Figures out what his learning style is, how he would like notifications, creating a character, and says this is different from other apps. I want the story to play out. And I think that's the user, the empathy map. I think that's good. So we got the comparisons, user persona, and the empathy map. Who's proud of us? We just did a full UX analysis. It is now 2.46. I'm going to go in and start designing the um, the other, like, start designing it into nice pretty pictures. And then we're going to hop into um, the reveal a little bit. And I think it's time for me to put the headphones in, get to work, hop in Illustrator, and get this thing done. Because i got to edit this and then post a Behance video and post. And you're going to be there. You're watching this now. All right, and then we're finally showing the reveal. It is very late at night, and here is the UX analysis. It's on my Behance profile, so if you're viewing this, you can go watch it. So here's what it is. Got the summary, research findings here, three-way comparison that we made, and some research analysis like necessities, unique features, considerations, the user persona, very nice, yes, you like it, and the empathy map, 
And then this is where you get a little button. So thank you for watching this 30 minute journey.